Greetings, fellow queerants. Tonight, I feel called to do a collective channeling first off. Um, and as I was getting ready and meditating for this session, I was hearing earth spirits, earth spirits. This particular stone, I typically use to channel higher dimensional entities. And this, um, this, this stone wants to wants to anchor this reading today. I believe it's Black Kyanite, if I remember co correctly, which is a stone, this is coated in titanium, but typically Black Kyanite is just black colored and uh, it, it's like other black stones that are often used for protection and absorbing energies. Um, pretty similar to black obsidian, I would say, in, in terms of usage. Although I'm not a crystal expert, but I always think of black obsidian when I think of black kyanite as well. So, all right, let's get this message started. So earth spirits, please come to us and speak to us, speak through me, use me as a vessel. Um, I was hearing that the earth spirits would like me to use some sound healing, energy healing. So as I shuffle, I will do some of that. So let's begin. Yasimna sena shia ua Garagisimana sayan hara Erusi se mana shia mana Isino karasid lekela manchia manu sepa gata yama Maya si right i feel like that's the end of that transmission light language is not something that i uh, typically have channeled for people so this is a little bit new to me too, and if there are any moments where I feel like there are intermissions where that should come out, then I will allow that to flow through me. So let's begin. We have an interesting shape to work with today. The world as our backup deck energy. Six of Wands here. Sense of victorious, victorious energies. Three of Cups. Going the other way though, victory in terms of sense of self instead of with others. I'm getting a very neutral feeling from this though. It's a sense of not requiring others to hold you up and gain this victory. And it's not to say, it's not giving the connotation that collaboration is bad. It's just sort of like a simple neutral statement of this particular victory. You have a significant sort of section over here separated from the rest of the reading. It's talking about the magician and a queen of pentacles. In, and they're crossing each other a diagonal. There's a sense of... The Magician is not completely upright and the Queen of Pentacles is not completely reversed. So we have a sense of the Magician almost being upright. It's like manifesting some sort of outcome, but there's a fraction of it that's left and surrendered to the cosmos. There's some aspect of control that you've given up. And again, I'm not really getting a negative sense from that. It's more like a voluntary um, surrender of control with the queen of pentacles she's not totally reversed so it's not a sense of 
instability. It's almost like giving up the control over not not needing to know how this abundance, this stability will come in. And I think this is where these two energies merge in terms of not needing to know is your act of surrender. You are still doing the steps to help manifest your manifestation into fruition, but you're surrendering, surrendering the steps that require you to know how it's done. It's more like just following the the trail of crumbs that the divine has given you. And you've found like a trust in this. And I think this relates to this victorious feeling that is on your own. Because involving other people in this surrender would actually destabilize the surrender. Don't mind one of my cats. <laughs> um, it would destabilize the sense of surrender. Because people, other people's input, whether or not it's well-intentioned, even if it is well-intentioned, which is what I feel. I don't feel it's like a malicious sort of intent to collaborate, but it's sort of their vibrations not completely matching yours and not matching your manifestation. So therefore, it will intrinsically lower your vibration if you listen too much to their frequencies, if you allow too much of their input to be in this manifestation. And it's more so like this input is not, it's not like direct collaboration. It's more like if you were to say, discuss something with a group of friends and they sort of give you unsolicited advice. And it's not to say that the unsolicited advice is bad, but it's more a sense of, you don't have to listen to every piece of advice. And you have, you can also understand that they may be speaking from their own experience, which may be a similar timeline, but is not the exact same timeline. And they don't know the extent of the timeline that you're in. So therefore that advice may not be useful in your context. And it's it's a sense of being able to stand alone and have a strong sense of self to be able to separate which parts are useful and which are not. And also if there are any parts that are projections of their ego, then this is not being allowed to 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 cultivate as a frequency in your manifestation. There's a sense of completion in the self because of this as we see in the world. Over here we have Temperance, the High Priestess, Four of Cups, Nine of Wands, Six of Cups, and mostly reverse, Five of Wands, Nine of Pentacles. It's an interesting little row here. Let's start with this. Sense of Independence. Flying free is something I'm getting from this bird. Flying free, flying free. There's, there's wings on the back of this person too. It's almost angelic. There's like a bit of like a holy a holy ghost kind of connotation to this. I think the temperance is talking about trust in something greater than yourself that you can sort of feel the presence of, but you can't describe what it is necessarily. It's like being empowered by like some sort of holy spirit. And by holy spirit, I don't necessarily mean like the biblical holy spirit. It can be any sort of divine entity that's with you, behind you, working above you. With the Five of Wands, Six of Cups. It is interesting in this Five of Wands, this person on the top sort of reaching for this, this flame at the top. And it's sort of, this is you, I think, in this Six of Wands. It's standing above the chaos. And sort of... A sense of competition too. The competition being, again, it's it's sort of reminiscent of the Three of Cups here where there's a competition that isn't an overt competition. It's not like signing up for a race and like everybody's, you know, explicitly understanding that they're part of this race that they want to be complicit in participating in. It's more a sense of, again, this sort of subconscious want to there there's subconscious attraction to your light to your manifestation to your vibration 
and them sort of clambering over themselves to keep themselves within your circle, within your aura, attaching to it in a, in a way. And you sort of having to hold the torch above all of it because they want a piece of it too. And again, it's not, I'm not getting a hugely malicious, like someone's trying to steal it from you, but it's simply the natural attraction from the the density and the high frequency of your aura is attracting people in this feeling is like it's it's like rumbling through the earth it's it can be felt by all creatures and things i would dare say too with the 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 bird that another reflection of this that you can see in your surrounding is i mean one people being attracted to you I'm seeing people like having an open open energy to you, wanting to talk to you, compliment you, express ideas to you, but animals and even even inanimate objects or um energies you may receive downloads of them sort of just wanting to be in your presence. interesting with the six of cups i'm hearing this is new to you this is new to you with the six of cups we t it talks about often nostalgia and it's not to say that you weren't attracting you know you weren't attractive before but i think the level of the purity of the interactions happening around you and with you as well as a sense of um A sense of you owning the fact that you are the center of your aura. You almost have like an orbit. The The pull of your aura is so great that there's no way to deny it. And I think in the past you haven't wanted to see yourself. You haven't wanted to admit to yourself that you are that attractive. I'm feeling like a pessimism, a, a self-sabotage, a self-defeating sort of energy that has happened in the past and now there there is no self-sabotage you are just seeing it for what it is and at the same time you're also not having your ego feed on the fact that you are attractive because that is sort of the polar opposite of you know wanting to hide yourself is always like forcing yourself to be seen for others to see you rather and now it's just more sort of a neutral like your mind is clear and these things happen and it doesn't phase you they're they're cute moments to sort of cherish but they don't define they don't define the rest of your experience and that sounds odd because it's if it's a good, you know, let's say like a compliment, why would it be bad to define your experience by that? But what I mean is you're so focused on your own energy and so kind of neutral and empty of mind in terms of things coming to you that you're dispelling, you're dispelling your emotional temperament from going too far into um, idealizing positive emotions in the same way that you would have before tipped into being overly pessimistic there is the potential that you could have been overly optimistic and now it's sort of a balance there's there's a balance between these two extremes and it just sort of is a neutralized peace and harmony the nine of wands this high priestess the Four of Cups. Let's take a deeper look. There's something blocking an aspect of you. Some sort of subconscious wounding. Some sort of heart space blockage that is being lifted 
or has been lifted. This is, I think this is the completion. And we have the green over here too, because I was hearing green, green with the moon. Heart space, heart space, right? And I think with the blue aspects in both of these cards too, it's speaking of throat chakra as well. The ability to sort of express that heart-based emotion. But I get a sense that your throat chakra wasn't as blocked before. It was more the heart space that was blocked. So you didn't have huge amounts of issues communicating your feelings and intentions but the heartfelt aspect was not there before so you couldn't communicate that because it just wasn't wasn't in you and now it is there's this past blockage here of not being able to really embody the magic that is happening around you you've been a magician for a long time but I think without reaching the the full the final milestone of your manifestation, which is it actually like coming to fruition and giving you like a tangible outcome, you're very much in this four of cups state and also this nine of wands state, this being blocked because the steps taken to manifest were manifesting, but it wasn't the complete outcome. So this victorious feeling was like this barrier in this Four of Cups where there's this, you know, the actual life and this sort of magical life happening here as the steps manifest. But I think even though this was happening because your the way you viewed this manifestation was um, based on the success of tangible outcomes... This has caused in the past for you to perceive it as a failure. And what's happening is the steps of this manifestation aren't particularly different. I think you're still following a fairly, um, what's the word, like consistent amount of steps towards this manifestation building. But what has changed is your attitude. You are seeing this as a success. You are seeing every step as a success. You are seeing the feelings around it as a success. And you're seeing like the presentness that you are now able to sort of sit in regarding this manifestation and the time that it's taking for it to happen as a sign of it successfully manifesting and pulling the future outcome into the present rather than a lack of stability, a, a layer of stability that hasn't been achieved yet. And this is the powerful shift and this is why people are feeling you. And this is why the earth is also speaking now to, to show you that the earth is listening and the earth feels this manifestation coming to fruition as well. Let's take some more cards. And I will I'll do a little bit more, more light language. Isino kero Strength in reverse, underneath we have Daughter of Wands, the Hanged Man in reverse, Four of Cups in reverse, Seven of Cups, Five of Swords, Mother of Swords in reverse, Father of Cups. Okay, that's a lot to take in, so let's start. Let's start over here. Father of Cups. Father of Cups.
There's much of the water element coming through. One second. There's a certain stability within you, and I think, uh, I see, this is emotional stability. This is the fatherly energy, your masculine side. I'm seeing that your masculine side has mastered other elements quite thoroughly in the past. I think the experiences that you've had to experience in your life and the karma that you've inherited from your lineage have given you a very high mastery of the fire element and air element in in the 3d realm so what does that translate to that is your communication your analytical sort of mental side your your ability to to rationalize logically analyze it is also your ability <clears throat> to pull down information from the the ethers and so <clears throat> pardon my throat when you put fire and air together air fans the fire so it was very easy for you to grasp information from beyond the veil that others are not typically as adept at and when this is in a masculine context this especially translates to not only are you pulling the information, are you perceiving it? And are you able, you're able to frame it in a way with the air element that is very logical and syntactical. It's like creating like taxonomies, essentially. And doing this, you are able to create logical frameworks and bring it into some sort of physical manifestation. This is, this combination can be very strong for creating theories of things. So, I mean, this could apply to anything, but the obvious examples are, let's say, maybe like a branch of science. You're creating some sort of new pathway or new, new vocabulary of definitions in some sort of area that is scientific. Now, when I say scientific, this can connotate, you know, things like researching STEM or math or whatever. But this can also apply to anything, so the arts as well, anything creative, there's also a theoretical side to the arts. And so this, this ability gives you that mastery to be able to create such a thing. <clears throat> However, right now, what is being mastered is your emotional body in terms of the masculine side. And this is why there's such a huge transformation happening within you. And also why there is, there's this newfound ability to sort of express this, this comfort, this emotional comfort, this lack of untempered ener uh, emotional energy. There's a way to sort of express it outward. And every time you express it outward, it comes back around to you. You've found a way to, to express emotions, express vulnerability, express the heart space in a way that makes you and others feel safe. Because that's essentially uh, the role of the masculine in, in its traditional role is to protect and what do you do? You protect the interaction between others. Let's go down to this five of... I'm getting drawn to the five of swords. The five of swords, the high priestess, the four of cups. Yeah, cutting off your old self. Regrowing the parts of you that were injured the regrowing the parts of you that allow 
this heart space to be felt whatever part of you energetically that is required to have this external yang element to an emotional safety this is what's getting healed right now or has healed this is the end of this karmic cycle essentially this mother of swords in reverse is interesting um let's talk about Six of Cups reverse, Nine of Wands. It's sort of like a triangular element here. I want one of the energy oracles. No, I'm not going to take that. Um, right, right at the apex of that, that triangle too. But I, I'm seeing, sensing a sort of the feminine aspect of your air element, the logical side, is what has kept you kept you from from having that that prior inability to sort of be attractive or rather rather that self-sabotage towards being attractive <laughs> this one flipped while i was shuffling the fourth chakra archangel raphael uh, i'm not going to take it though because it's kind of repetitive of everything we just talked about um let's take First chakra, Archangel Michael in reverse. First chakra. First chakra. In the context of... Yeah, it's it's the self-sabotage came from not feeling safe. And what is... What is air element in the yin aspect? The motherly aspect? This, the, this would be Queen of Swords. It's... It's a damaged water and air element mixed together because all queens are by default water element and then the suit on top of it. <clears throat> so there's an element of not being safe, hence the self-sabotage. And why? Because the self-sabotage was generated from not feeling safe to express emotions, to have emotional connection, interactions with others. And it's, it's because it's not so much that there's proof that it wasn't safe in the external world, but rather you didn't feel safe in yourself. And because you didn't feel safe in yourself, you therefore could not externalize it. Sorry, I had to, had to cut the video because my cat stepped on the space bar, <laughs> as she usually does. Okay, um, let's see. What else is there? What else is there? Getting drawn to the hanged man next. Three of Cups, Temperance, the Hangman in reverse. Four of Cups in reverse. Yeah, it's like this sense of removing yourself from what I was talking about, where the, the energies are sort of impacting your ability or were impacting your ability to feel victorious within yourself about your manifestations. Now, how is this connected to the self-sabotage energy? It's because the manifestation... You've taken enough steps, again, these these, these sort of prerequisite steps before you get to whatever like milestone you're trying to achieve. It's like you've seen yourself be successful in these steps. And every time you've done that, you've come across understanding that I have done this, I can do this, and I will continue to do more. And even if it seems kind of far off to reach this milestone, even if it isn't very clear how long it will take, or how exactly I will get there because as we all know as you progress a timeline you know random curveballs will get thrown at you um this is this is what has caused this lack or rather this shift in transmuting the self-sabotage energy and what has happened is your by you doing this manifestation which is a more yang activity by bringing it out into the physical world you have proven to yourself that it is safe to connect to the outside world and what that has done has activated your masculine energy which has protected your feminine energy and this is why this shift is able to happen because your feminine energy feels protected by by the success of your masculine energy sorry this is the, the glare is not chill okay there we go <laughs> i'm just realizing the whole time this is not not visible but anyways um Strength in reverse at the back of this deck. I mean, I feel like that's fairly, fairly sorry, I'm 
tongue twisted, fairly self-explanatory. We don't, we're losing strength. Oh, I pulled out daughter, daughter of wands underneath. Yeah, it's like, um, previously there was a, it's like, I feel like energy is be, has, or had been wasted. Or at least that's the perception. The perception was that you were losing strength because you were losing strength because energy had been wasted. When we have Daughter of Wands, which is the less mature version of Mother of Wands or Queen of Wands, there's an essence of there's there's less mastery over the element. So manifestations sort of not being as cultivated as wisely. Under here were ten of ten of swords in reverse. I think by losing your strength in this process too, you've been able to analyze where energy has been lost. It's it's a combination of energy being lost and understanding what makes up waste, quote unquote, but at the same time also maintaining a certain level of ch like ch inner child energy. <clears throat> to understand that's also important to view it as experimentation because one of the faults of a reverse queen um, archetype is that there is a lack of experimentation because having it's almost like having too much wisdom can almost become pessimism. It's like, oh, I know so much already, so therefore I know this experimentation with this thing is most likely going to fail. And it's, it's a catch-22 in that I think this loss of strength has actually been your removal of burden, hence the hanged man in reverse. It is the removal of blockage, the removal of, of not being able to progress with this seven of pentacles in reverse. And ultimately, what does that lead to? This process leads to this four of cups being reversed, where over here is mostly upright. But we're cutting that part off, so now it is reversed. We are lifting out of that. This temperance here, this seven of cups here. Let's get a little more information. All right. All right. The the fourth chakra archangel Raphael really wants to come out. So here we are again. I'm not gonna lie. I don't really know what exactly wants to be said here because I feel like I talked a lot about this already. But let's see if we can get more. Community in reverse. Okay, interesting. Um, okay, interesting, interesting. I'm getting a sense that envy. A man holding a coin, financial constraint. So I didn't even see that come out. Uh, I'm just going to pull one right here because I want clarification on this. Okay. I'm back of deck, a broken heart. Yes, this lack of strength was caused by the broken heart. I think for a long time, you were holding this manifestation in its yin phase, its gestation period, which I mean is not wrong in any way. Every you know manifestation has to go through such a process, and in in that process, you of the yin parts of a manifestation, because every manifestation you know has. I've, I've talked about this before in other readings, but every manifestation has a birth chart, right? And it has its own karma and it will have periods of actively producing things or not producing things and needing to sort of rest and alchemize. In other words, it has a yin yang cycle, right? And I think when you were in the more gestation yin period of this manifestation, you were forced to look at yourself and your belief systems because to co-create with this manifestation, you need to have the same emotional temperament and therefore the emotional frequency that allows the manifestation to grow. It's almost kind of like what I'm seeing is being in like a greenhouse and certain plants have certain amounts and brightnesses of light I have no idea how greenhouses work, by the way, so 
I might be totally flubbing the way I'm describing this, but <laughs> so, you know, it's like th there has to have a, a particular type of light, be it the color, the, the amount of heat from it. Uh, I don't know, maybe how wide the, the light spreads or how far away from the, the plant it is. All of these conditions have to be correct for it to grow. And in the same way, your emotions also have to be correct for your manifestation to grow. And so this yin cycle was a lot about understanding why there was a blockage from you co-creating with your manifestation to bring it to a more yang state where it can you can see the fruits of its production. Now, with Broken Heart, I mean, obviously, Heart Chakra, we've been talking about that a lot. Broken Heart, there's a sense of, you know, whatever past sort of emotional issues have existed in you, whatever past timelines have come to the forefront because this also, you know, affects your manifestation because it's made of you. You're essentially giving birth to it. And I think there's a sense of you were listening to people who weren't at the right vibration or, or taking too much of their input too seriously. And I, th I feel a jadedness here with this community in reverse, the envy, the financial constraints, man holding a coin. There's a jadedness for a lot of reasons. So the jadedness being about, it's sort of like a disbelief that you'll ever find people to be able to collaborate in this manifestation with. And it's a sense of, in order for this to manifest to its full, fullest potential, there's a community around it that needs to be had because it's sort of like the concept of it takes like a village to raise a child. I think that's that's how it goes. It's the same sort of concept. This manifestation requires the input of people who will love and nurture it. And it's not to say that these people are needed immediately, but there, I think you understand that there is a certain point where this manifestation has its own life, basically, and has to interact with other people and things. And I think there's a sense of these people that you've known in these times have jaded you for various reasons. Um, I think one that's really affected your heart chakra specifically is the envy card here. It's a sense of... And this happens a lot when your vibration raises, but when you do something higher vibrational, other people will subconsciously just start saying things that are very pessimistic about your manifestation. So if you share things about it or bounce ideas off of them, they will say things that are very obviously them envying your position. And they may not even be doing it consciously. A lot of the times they're not. And so for you, you, because you have this emotional discernment, you can tell that they're they're envious. And while it's not quite a, as destructive of a feeling as jealousy, it certainly is. Um, it's an indicator that these people are not at the vibration where they can just feel just as happy for you as you are for yourself. There's a rift in the the way that you are being celebrated and appreciated by these people. From an emotional standpoint, I think this has affected you the most in terms of being able to bring this masculine aspect of your emotional body out. With the financial, I mean, the man holding a coin and financial constraints is pretty straightforward, but I think also that material constraints have been a very um, big thing to prevent this community card from being upright. You probably don't feel like you simply had the money to bring this manifestation to the next step. Sorry, I'm just give me a second. I'm trying to. I feel like there's there's something deeper here. I'm trying to feel. Um, let's take one of these. I'm seeing something about an envelope. Passing off hands. Mm, seven, seven of swords. Mostly in reverse. You've been betrayed monetarily, for sure. 
And if it's not money, then it's some other physical resource. But I think for, I mean, most of you, it's probably money. I think in this manifest, in the timeline of this manifestation, I think there actually has been a specific point with specific people that have like outright betrayed you over money or some other, uh, met, uh, some other material 3D resource. And that has also damaged your heart chakra a lot. This has damaged your heart chakra more in the sense of, how do I frame this? It's not so much your ability to show your emotions like it has been over here and share your ideas safely. It's more a sense of the concrete 3D steps that I have to take to actually make this manifestation come from come from the emotional realm into the physical world. You feel like you can't trust anyone or you felt like you can't trust anyone. And this has come through here. This is this part of yourself is what you're chopping off. Finally, finally, finally. And the impact of this is so great that the earth is shaking, vibrating as this cycle has completed. I'm seeing that this blockage was so heavy on your heart chakra that it's almost like, oh my gosh, how do I describe this? Like, the, the closest thing I can understand in the 3D realm of what this feels like is if you were to take, like, let's say a pan flute or a, any wind instrument and you stuck, like, a cancerous lump inside the instrument and if you were to just compare, like, blowing it without the lump versus blowing it with the lump... It's like your aura, the frequency of it was giving the vibration of it with the lump in it. And now it is just clear, flowing, free. The instrument has been unblocked and repaired. Yes. All right. Whew, I think that is... Is there anything else? Is there anything else? I think we're getting definitely close to the end, if not the end of the message. All right three more out i think we need to chill though because it's we're getting up on like almost i think it's been 45 ish minutes now something like that all right all right um eight of swords the lovers five of wands again I think this is this is just a message of reassurance. You will find your flock, your soul tribe. This is a reminder of don't worry too much about about getting to the end of this healing process. You are at the vibration or coming into the vibration of attracting your soul tribe. And by this, I mean, like, you may have people who have been close to you already, but this is a whole nother level of the connections in your life. This is, these are people that have gone through this same alchemical process and they are at the same parts in their timelines. And they are also blindly trusting, not blindly trusting, but they're trusting and surrendering the control of their manifestations in the same way that you are they're unblocking themselves with this five of wands typically this talks about chaos and competitiveness but i'm getting more just a a feeling of puzzling pieces together puzzling pieces together with the lovers here it's like choices integration These people will understand your manifestation and you will understand theirs. And you will understand and they will understand the mutual experience that you all share in these timelines that you've 
spent alchemizing and healing from. Okay, again, one more. Woman holding a heart. Attachment. Adjacent possibilities. You will feel at home with these people is what I'm getting from this card. They will support you in the way that a loving mother should. They will support you in a way like a loving mother would support their children. And you will do the same to them. It's, there's not like an essence of one, it's like patronizing one or the other. It's like this is a mutual sort of shared energy with this magician in the mirror. It's like mirroring this behavior back to each other. And you will also... They will also, you will also not discourage the path that you have told yourself is the correct one. What I mean by that is, I think there's a tendency when people are envious where they will, they will try to suggest adjacent possibilities in the context of suggesting more pessimistic outcomes. It's sort of like, if you say, I want to make $100 million, they'll be like, well, wouldn't it be real, more realistic to just make a, like 100000 That's the sort of like energy I'm getting from this. And it's because they, people who have this energy have an attachment to the rules of the physical realm. They don't know how to transcend it the way that it happens in the fifth dimension. They don't understand that that the rules of how the logic of things coming to you being attracted to you don't really apply in the fifth dimension it's a different kind of math there are things that are seemingly unrelated that can just sort of suddenly happen and as you look closer they're actually very very logically karmically related but it requires understanding different dimensions of of like karmic logic and spiritual logic to understand how two seemingly different things are very related which is essentially quantum entanglement. Um, and it's sort of the, the, the people who don't understand this will be trapped in this, this pessimistic thinking of, well, shouldn't you just do the realistic thing? And these people will not, you will know they're your soul tribe because they understand how these quantum mechanics work, how these seemingly un unrelated things are actually completely related. It will be just as intuitive to them as it has been to you this whole time. And I think there's a certain light up in your inner child that will happen with this here. Much like I was talking about the difference of the masculine and feminine. Your masculine is coming out to play. Your masculine side of your inner child is coming out to play. With this cup here. It's like the, the creativity flowing from it. And being able to be shared and sipped by other people. Because there will be a safe space for you to finally share and interact with each other. And allow yourselves to sort of be playful and like quote unquote naive. The way that an, a child is. There will be a comfort in that. There will be being able to do that without having to defend yourself. And that's how you know that your soul tribe is here. Whew, all right, I think that is the end of the message. Thank you so much for watching. This was definitely a longer than I was expecting. Um, very interesting to do. And yeah, if you'd like to support the channel, the best way you can do that is to subscribe down below or hit the like button. Uh, commenting and sharing is also very helpful. Uh, there's a tip jar and donation link down below if you would like to donate. Um, always appreciated, but never obligated. And finally, if you have reading requests, I will try to accommodate them if I can. Uh, so please feel free to leave suggestions and I will do my best to see if I can do that. I wish you all a wonderful rest of existence.